Okay, and that's five after the hour. So uh, this is Dan Kahn, uh, Executive Director of CMCF, and uh, I am actually in Paris today, uh, closer, I think, to a lot of our uh, regular participants. Um, we have made good progress on this first chapter or preamble to the uh, cloud native uh, telecom user group white paper. So um, I want to thank everybody for their involvement so far and um, see if we could try and talk through um, what are some of the open issues that folks are aware of. I don't think um, Alex Salkever could make it on this call. So I'm curious if Lucina or someone else might be able to say what are um, some of the areas that are um, most contentious here. I, I'm actually, um, I think we, uh, Alex is also going to be able to remove a lot of these comments the next time he goes through here. Um, so that was the main thing that I was looking to um, do on the call today. Our, our hope, if we can reach a rough consensus on this, is to be able to publish this white paper and um, or preamble and announce it in time for KubeCon in two weeks. Um, the other topics is that we do have this a joint TUG and CNTT meeting that's, uh, there's two of them, two hours each occurring on both Mo Monday, November 18th and Wednesday, November 20th. And I did want to um, encourage as many folks as possible on this call to attend. Um, and then uh, Lucina and Taylor, were there other, let's see this. Um, yeah, so we, we, and then, so one of the big areas that we need to discuss is the CNF de definition. Um, and then another one that I wanted to highlight in the white paper is the diagram of uh, what used to be on past, present, future. And I just replaced that. It's now at the top of page eight uh, under the section evolving the stack from BNFs to CNFs, where um, I tried to simplify it uh, drastically and um, would like feedback on whether uh, I succeeded and whether that new format makes sense or not. Um, Lucina, could you find that? Yeah, it's um, that page eight uh, diagram on the next tab. Um, that's the footnotes. Huh. You're not looking at the right document. It is, um, yeah, exactly. And there we are. So um, I previously had a past, present, future version of this, and it um, was specifically linked to some ideas about uh, functionality in ONAP Amsterdam versus ONAP Casablanca, where it might be in the future. And so I really tried to simplify all of that away and just talk about um, this CNF architecture. Um, and are there other, yeah, so we, we need to talk about agenda items for the joint TUG CNTT meeting. Uh, Taylor, were there other topics that you wanted to discuss on this call? I think these, this is probably enough um, for this call. I, I think if, if we wanted to take a quick view of the, uh, the paper that chapter one and then maybe dive into the items that folks want to talk about including the cnf definition the request for comments okay. i guess i'll just put um repeating that we're wanting to get feedback uh, before wednesday and we're planning on setting the agenda so this is a, a lf wiki if you have an lf id then you should be able to update the wiki, um, add items to the brainstorming. And we have kind of a 
tentative skeleton. We're thinking lightning talks on the first day and um, maybe some more in-depth um, working session on the second day and potentially a panel. But uh, if you have ideas, please add them to that. Maybe one thing to follow up on the definition specifically, Dan, uh, to try to help people that are in different parts of the world and uh, may not be able to attend, just a suggestion to have a follow up to today's discussion of the chapter one white paper items and put out some suggestions for time. So if we can get those on and I'm willing to join uh, an early morning to make it easier for people in um, Asia Pacific to join. Yeah, so if, if we scroll to that page, I believe it's mm -hmm. page five is where we have different alternatives. And I wanted yeah. to throw out um, some principles to try and select it here. And I think we could probably do it fairly fast, which is I'm um, very interested to link to, I, I believe it was Frederick who made the suggestion, uh, linked to Etsy as uh, a uh, informative uh, reference that I think there's a, a you know huge amounts of work that have been done in the past and a lot of um, valuable background that people should look at. But I, I would really like to try and avoid making normative references externally where it requires you to be on top of all of the Etsy material um, in order to understand the meaning of this document. And it, it, I, I'd like to try and minimize the normative references we make, period, at all. Um, I, I do already have one exception to that where we're making a normative reference to the cloud native definition. But because that document's three sentences are also controlled by uh, CNCF, it's a, um, I think, a simpler process. And so um, I will um, come in and I think make my own alt suggestion here. But I guess I, I would love to see, is there anyone, uh, and, and I was be curious to hear on your perspective, that has a perspective that a CNF um, can't be, uh, about whether it adjusts a container can be a CNF or whether it has to be a pod or whether it can be a collection of pods. I think, I think the fundamental question is, what do you associate with the letter C? If you associate containers, then there is one answer. If you associate cloud native, then nat naturally containers or, you know, maybe even pods are not enough. Pods are certainly better because there is the assumption of using Kubernetes for orchestration. Containers, you know, you can use without Kubernetes and therefore could be heavily contested whether that could be considered cloud native. Sure. Um, I, I will say that um, I helped coin the CNF term, and we were always clear that it was cloud native network function, not containerized network function, to try and make things um, a, a little bit more specific. But that mm -hmm. doesn't totally answer my question about uh, trying to limit exactly what a CNF is. I would say not limiting it to containers or pods. Um, since I expect uh, the platforms, including Kubernetes, to use whatever um, underlying blocks make sense. I think the functionality may look similar to a pod or container, but there may be something that's not a container. Um, and I, I don't think that's the, the definition of a container and what it does is what I think you care about, and, and then more specifically, all the different um, parts in that would be the principles around being cloud native. In so, so you suggest that, say, that the, mm -hmm. go on, go on. Uh, I would say that a container is an implementation of one part of that, and just like pods, they're an implementation, and the technology that's implementing those if we point to those and we need to grow beyond that, then we're not gonna cover it. Or if someone came in and changed those and it's from 
someone's perspective of caring about the principles, maybe a pod is no longer cloud native. It's unlikely, but that would be why I would say, let's focus on the definitions of what they mean versus the implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I tend to approach the kind of cloud nativeness from the benefit end, and, and in the telco context, certainly the benefit is, you know, the disaggregation, but also the unified lifecycle management via Kubernetes APIs. And so I would not link it to containers necessary because we might want to introduce new runtimes handling VMs or kata containers or whatnot, which are strictly speaking not containers, not just Linux containers, it's something else. Uh, and therefore, if we limit things to containers, then, then we sort of shut down the cloud nativeness towards those technologies, which is certainly not something I would support. Just my two cents on, on, on containers. So containers are excellent for an, for a, for a, an example, but it cannot be only about containers. Exactly, that's it. Like it can be used as an example, but uh, like either containers or bots, but I think like limiting it uh, is not uh, the perfect way. I think it's worth pointing out that the, the kind of five the five alternatives that we we've put into the um, chapter one document, uh, I don't think any of them mention containers. Um, I think that's important to note. There's a lot of talk of microservices and immutable infrastructure, but I don't think there's any, any mention of containers in those um, definitions. Um, so um, this is uh, Ramki. So I, I think it may be worth actually pointing out the distinction with a concrete example. So what I'm seeing is like, um, if you go to, uh, for example, the RAN components, for example, uh, CU, uh, especially the DU, uh, there, uh, the movement is just around containerization, but not really cloud native. Um, I think I can, in fact, add that. I can volunteer to add that. That really is a pretty concrete example which is emerging. Um, so then that draws like, hey, if you want to just go containers, but not truly cloud native, embracing Kubernetes, and this is like a method to do this with an example uh, versus uh, just saying, um you know uh it's always cloud native correct so part of the way that i think of cloud native is if i if i have a piece of software and i stick it in uh in a cloud native orchestrated system will my will my application gain the benefits uh, the majority of the benefits that uh, that people typically look for in such an environment. Uh, so, for example, can I scale it horizontally, or will it? Uh, can I get it to auto heal and uh, and recover? And uh, is the uh, configuration declarative, so I can configure it in an easier and more holistic way? And so, so I think uh, part of it is uh, trying to trying to drive the definition in, in that path and. I think part of the problem that we're going to run into is like, yes, you can build some like um, something that follows the cloud native uh, definition, uh, but and then stick it into something that into an orchestrator that does not support uh, cloud native principles or cloud native uh, orchestration. I guess you'd say. Uh, and even though you've built it in this particular way, many of the benefits like you'll still get benefits out of it, but you won't get that. It's it's when you couple it with the orchestrator that you get that you that you maximize the uh, the benefit. So that's, that's the heuristic guide that I tend to use my, myself. Frederick, can you go ahead and recommend one of the five options, though, based on what you just said? Sure. Let let me read the five options. So, um. um it looks like someone's accidentally deleted part of alt one and all of there was alt one dot one. I don't have access to the version history. Can someone um, put those back if you have like undo capabilities? I do. It'll just take me a minute to find it though. Okay, but I, no I don't think I'm the one who broke it. <laughs> Uh, 
I just have suggest access, so I don't think I did. Um, Well, that, that's ongoing. I think uh, one, one of the big difference between the different alternatives is some of them are talking about cloud native network functions, while others are talking about not cloud native network applications. And I think it's worth pointing out that while, you know, typical telco functions are cloud native network functions, uh, network functions themselves are usually defined by uh, standards like 3GPP, while application can be anything like an OSS or a BSS as well. So naturally, uh, application is a much wider category than network function and a much less already defined category than network function. So for that reason, maybe it would be better to talk about at applications and not network functions. If then you are adamant not to, to link into any no other normative definitions, then network functions are very clearly defined by ETSI and FE, and then the network functions themselves are defined by 3GPP. So maybe it's a better option to talk about applications. So, yeah, sorry if this is unnecessary them. complication to the an already complicated discussion, but I had to sort of say this. Yeah, so this is Watson. As far as the, the definitions, one of the things that keeps coming up is the grouping of microservices, or if you want to say containers or pods or VMs or whatever, and then the um, a single microservice pod or whatever. And so within cloud native, a group of microservices is an application. So um, within the Etsy docs, it looks like there's a group of uh, a group of functionality can be a network function. Um, so that's some one point of confusion. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think the the what I tried to add in for Alt 1.1 and one of the others, I think, was was to use the um, link it to the definition of a, a virtualized network function component, um, which is the bit in Etsy which decomposes that higher level function into those multiple bits of functionality potentially. Um, right. And so, with a with a kind of cloud native network function cloud native network function component could be a microservice. Right. That's that's where the direction on the alt four and alt five were going was pointing out yeah. that there's a concept of <laughs> all right. Can someone um, just hit undo or something and get the stuff back just from hitting undo? It might yeah, not look very like, nice, but if you if you click on see new changes at the top there, you'll be able to see what happened. It'll be crossed out, but you'll be able to read it. Um, I can't get to the version history. And I'm not I saying know, that I, new changes. I, I don't know. I, I don't know who's sharing, but in see new changes at the top, it's grayed out next to help. I should let you see if we scroll down what the what was deleted. It's stri strike through, but you'll still be able to see the words. Oh, that'll work. Can you highlight those and I drop them back in? Thank you, listening. All right. Um, One more time. It, you got to do it twice. It did a strike through, and then you can do the end, the end strike through after. Okay, there we go.
So I, I think that Alt-1 was trying to expand on what was in the um, one of the other white papers to have the Etsy uh, um, definition that it was referencing yeah, that's right. added. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was calling out the specific terms from the Etsy definitions that were useful rather than just saying as per, you know, whatever the document reference was. So, um, and then I don't know if we want to oh, break down oh, these. Oh, what it doesn't yes, have oh. in Alt-1 is a, it doesn't define what well-defined external interfaces or well-defined functional behavior is. If those have definitions somewhere else, um, they, they leave it vague enough that that could be anything. What is, what is a well-defined external interface? Um, and this could, I think there was, someone mentioned benefits as, as a one way to look at things. The problem with having benefits as, as your, as your um, part of your definitions, it doesn't, it leaves it open to interpretation. So then you could say, if you want segregation, well, you could do segregation in many different ways. So that, that that would be the only thing there. Um, in, in any case, this is just an expansion, I think, of the from the other white paper to make sure and include those parts. It doesn't include some of the things that folks have mentioned, like the cloud native network components. It does mention part of the virtual network function, but then points over. And I think Alt 1.1 is trying to add in part of the cloud native um definition or what what does that mean out of the preambles and principles document and expand a little bit on the etsy definition it looks like yeah so it's so alt.1 uh, one one sorry there, there was a comment on alt one that the, the okay. cncf cloud native definition um wasn't um wasn't kind of detailed enough about what we'd want to see from a cloud native network function and so I added in that that bit about immutable infrastructure from the cloud native principles document that was being written um, because I felt it called out what we were looking for from a, you know, in terms of guidance for the software vendors, if you like. But the rest of it was the same, more or less. Sounds good. Um, can, can you scroll down, Lucina, to Alt 1.2? So this one, I was trying to build on this based on, I think, the Alt 4 and 5. I added this one in. Um, so it's taking some of those ideas, um, or the direction of Alt 1.1, and then linking it a little bit more towards the cloud native side. So I, this is mainly to do a mapping. So what are we looking at for folks that are doing cloud native already that are interested in um, the net cloud native network functions? What would that mean? And then if you're going the other way, trying to say, how do we take something that we understand from the NFV world and move towards cloud native? So this was talked about a little bit earlier. It seems like a cloud native network function, if, if we take actually let me step over if we take a virtual network function it seems like a virtual network function is a cloud native or could be an application and so a cloud native network function could be a cloud native application so it's it's a specifically an application that focuses on the network domain and that's that has a, a good definition and and then this is saying it's similar to a virtual network function. And it's specifically saying similar because I think there's going to be pieces maybe like the virtualized, um, the virtualized hard hardware abstraction are probably not going to be part of a cloud native network function. That's going to be, there's going to be something pushed out. So it won't actually be in the, the, um, the network function itself that would be taken out in a virtual network function, it needs to know how to work with it. 
but that's potentially not going to be part of it. Um, it may be part of it, but that's why I'm saying it's similar versus the same. And, and, and then reuse the parts that you have in here about the immutable infrastructure, declarative APIs. What I added in was composed of microservices to your 1.1. I think that's important. It wouldn't be, um, well, I'm proposing that a cloud native application is composed of microservices. That's, that's already a, a defined definition of what those applications are. So if a virtual network function is an application, then it seems like a cloud native network function would be an application and you would follow those standards. And then if we have that, if it's composed of microservices and other parts that allow it to be an application. Well, microservices are very similar to the virtualized network function components that are defined in Etsy. So now you have a mapping on both the application level, the network function, and the components that it's uh, built from. And I think that would allow people that are doing application level, but the development and deployment to know on both sides if you're familiar with the networking world or the cloud native platforms what you want to do and then i think the rest of it is as 1.1 so that goes down to the saying what etsy defines a virtual network function as um, and then going on from there but what's not defined in here but we could add probably sh should be breaking down this as a paragraph would be what are virtual network function components I think going back to one of your earlier comments as well about what is a well-defined external interface and well-defined functional behavior, we could add that they are defined by industry standard specifications. You know, Thomas mentioned 3GPP, for example, you know, that, that I think in, that's how I would read it in that they are defined by a, an industry specification. Yeah, I think that that would be a worthwhile addition just to, to quantify a little bit what what we are referring to but otherwise i think that's a that's a really good definition i like the addition of similar and composed of microservices it makes makes it more sense um and to me i think clarifying the vnfc uh, mapping it out i think makes perfect sense in fact i think the vnfc mapping would be to more of a pod within a microservice i think if you add it i think that tells the story very clearly So, is um, do we want to do we want to add in the the concept of uh, of um, having to tie the uh, the mechanism to talk to a CNF to a to a set of specifications because this is something that'll probably happen organically organically anyways uh, through uh, through the market and one of the things that I want to be a bit careful with is that. Uh, we don't we don't deny uh, groups who have more esoteric uh, needs or want to or want to experiment so they can try to push the uh, the boundary further. Like perhaps what we could do is uh, is say for the purposes of uh, of certification or so on, then yeah, you absolutely must use a well defined uh, mechanism. It seems like we're mixing implementation along with the definitions. Um, for the, the standards we're talking about where we're saying those standards have a definition for the well-defined external interfaces, for instance, and um, being able to point to a specific standard that we think is important, um, for example. If, I think we should we have, make sure it is example, though. 
yeah that definitely yeah. as just an example to because otherwise i think frederick's concern is is met from the standpoint of of saying you're from a virt virtual network uh, function we're saying that those standards like one of them is you're going to use virtual hardware abstraction so to be able to you're in at some point you're going to implement some type of connectivity to the network and hardware but you're using some type of abstraction layer and it seems like when you get down to the external interfaces and functional behavior there's there's this edge between what the standard is and then how you're going to implement it um, in the virtual network function i don't i don't know how far we need to go talking about implementation versus saying any type of behavior should be implemented following cloud native standards if if you're if you have a standard that requires you to let, let's say that maybe if either the functional behavior or the interface from the a standard that you're wanting to integrate with would not allow you to do it in a cloud native way i think that should we shouldn't make the definition of a cnf um, limit it to a standard that's not cloud native. Instead, I think we should say this network function that's implementing that functionality that's required in the industry because it's already out there is not cloud native. And I think that would be okay. So we could say we have 95% of our network functions are now cloud native this set which are critical to the business are not cloud native and here are the reasons why and then you work on those standards to allow them to be implemented if possible but what we're talking about is a set of principles and def well not definitions but principles and they <clears throat> that you can follow that will give some benefits if the benefits do not meet your needs then you select something else but what we're saying is if you follow the principles and they give the benefits, then someone should be able to say, I've followed all the criteria and meet those, the, um, what's required to get the benefits based on definitions. So there was one thing that, that, you know, I, I couldn't really place. And then you refer to a standard, which is not cloud lately, which standard did you have in mind? Just curious. I'm, so so I were you referring to 3GPP or, or, or Etsy NFV when you said it's a non-cloud native standard? Uh, well, I don't think you're referring to either one of those. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, uh, I, uh, I'll respond sorry, to it. Um, sorry. Uh, Frederick, and then you can add. Um, what, what I was saying was if there's a standard out there. So this goes with, we need to be able to integrate with um, Brownfield and there could be things. I, I've done a lot of work with stuff that's legacy. You can have stuff that's been running for 20 plus years and you mm -hmm. need to keep integrations. So whatever it is, I'm not saying that 3GPP is, is legacy. What I'm saying is if there's something in there that you have a definition for some interface, because mm -hmm. it's something that's running and you can't implement that in a cloud native way that's okay it just happens to be one of one of the one particular application that you're going to implement that's not going to be able to follow all the standards that's okay whatever it is what I, what i'm saying is the cloud native network function definition should focus on being cloud it should follow all the principles and definitions to be cloud native and then and being able to implement as much of the existing applications that are needed in in the nfv world without without it being 
without compromising what it means to be cloud native. Sure. If so, so let's if say let's mm -hmm, say if ahead. there is a standard that talks about an interface between two network functions that require you know layer two functionality, would you claim that 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 is something that is not cloud native, and it's not something that should be implemented in a cloud native way? Absolutely not on that particular example. That mm -hmm. that example okay. can be cloud native in my mind. I mean, that's okay. specifically what stuff like network service mesh and other, you know, many other projects and are trying to solve how to do these layer two things in a cloud native way. I think that you can do all of, if we say OSI layers in a cloud native way. Um, if you go into very specific examples, I'm sure that we could go through and find something that we say this is not possible to do in a cloud native way. And you don't mm -hmm. have to think about networking. There's enterprise applications um, and many other applications that you could say, the way you've designed this does not allow you to build a cloud native version. You'd have to redesign it completely, which is okay. Not all principles are going to be beneficial to solve all problems. <clears throat> and this is Watson. Here's one thing also to keep in mind with the definition of cloud native microservices and so on and so forth. Um, even in this paper, if we were to say, you know, put what definition we want here. If you have a monolith and then you say that it's cloud native, um, the community is just going to say, no, it's not regardless of what we put here so there are certain certain patterns that we might consider an anti-pattern and you know it's just we're, we're not going to be fooling anyone um so it's something to be aware of so some of the, the charge is going to be that some of these things that are ported over are monoliths and not microservices or not they don't use microservices I think, yeah, I think for, fund, fundamentally, these, these standards that we're discussing very, very seldom define something that dictates a certain way of implementing a, a network function. So whether it's implemented as a network function or as a million of modules, which are microservices, these questions are typically, uh, you know, orthogonal to what these standards define, which is basically what is the protocol we are using for communicating and what is the, you know, the, what are the state transition diagrams and so on that we need to adhere to. So um, I, I see in many cases that when it comes to telco standards, they sort of ignore whether the implementation fulfills the cri cloud native criteria or cloud native definition or not. Uh, they just look at how these functions communicate through their APIs or through their interfaces. So. I, I don't see anything wrong here with the approach. I just wanted to understand what when you said, uh, you know, non-cloud native standards. How 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 do you mean that? Yeah. Well, is is it okay if I a little bit on on this particular one? Yeah. Um, go ahead, Frederick. Yeah. So so part of part of what I the reason I brought that particular thing up in the first place was first uh, worst case scenario, and I don't think anyone's doing this here uh, anymore. Is we don't uh, we don't say it must be the host user, it must be Mammoth, or you know here here's the blessed uh, the blessed list. Um, I in these standards, I'm I'm glad to hear like the other various standards don't uh, push into the implementation to to that degree as well. So for me, that that's a very good sign. Um, the one thing that I was thinking of is we need to make sure that there's some form of, uh, of flexibility for uh, for operators to be able to choose what uh, what they want within their their infrastructures, and also the flexibility for vendors to pick and choose things that <coughs> that work for them. And I want to be a little bit careful because uh, we, if we, if we say that industry best, uh, best standards, like that's, you know, which standards are we talking about? Which ones are going to be the, the ones that are blessed or, or, or not? Like for me, that, that could be a best practice that we drive towards saying we highly recommend you use industry well-known standards and, and so on. But, uh, but I also want to be careful with not 
creating a definition that becomes dependent on an external on an external standard. And my my preference would be that we that we have part of the cloud native path be you state what your how, you you state how you communicate with the outside world. Like you, you can say I speak MAMIV, I speak VHOS user, I speak HROV direct with DBDK or or so on. Um, and you specify what payload that you have. Like my payload is going to be IP or Ethernet or MPLS or or something else. And that way that you then give you you now create a declarative uh, setup that allows your orchestrator to pair things together. You've given enough context that they can start pairing things or tell you when things won't work, while at the same time providing the flexibility for uh, for future innovation and um, and for operators to be able to to standardize if they if they choose to do so as well. From the standpoint of um, implementation, when it comes down to whether it's uh, vendors uh, trying to help build things or the operators either defining or um, the platforms that are being created, all of it, whoever's working on this, uh, for all of the brownfield, um, folks are going to want to integrate with existing standards from wherever the standard bodies so that they can both utilize existing infrastructure, um, integrate with other uh, groups. And I don't think that defining, uh, having a declarative um, manner for saying, here's what we want the either a network function or platform as Frederick is saying, I don't think that stops us from using existing standards. What the suggestion is, is we don't have those external standards as part of the definition of a cloud native network function. Instead, we say, here's how a cloud native network function should behave. And um, here's how we expect it to be uh, developed and the platform support that's expected, and you can talk about all the different layers, uh, which are in other um, areas, not in this intro. And then as far as implementation, you're saying when you're following these principles, we want to be able to support existing standards. Well, that's that's um, would be developing an application to meet a specific standard. So I don't think there's anything that we're suggesting to define being cloud native that would say you're not able to meet a majority of the standards. I I just put it as a a note that there could be specific example application or I'll say virtual network function or a um, NFV platform component that you wouldn't be able to implement in a way that someone would recognize it in a cloud native way. But as far as following, if we had a, a cloud native definition of, of a CNF that's fully cloud native and not saying it's using, it's, it's using an external standard and it must have those interfaces, then you're still open to implementing this. It doesn't block us in. And that seems like when you would say, what's an example of a, a cloud native 5G um, session border controller? Well, that's probably something that we could have an example section. How would you create that as a cloud native? And you'd probably break that down and say, here's how it, it could look. So it's not stopping either integration or implementation of those standards. It's as Frederick said, we're not locking ourselves into expanding. Someone could build a brand new greenfield platform that doesn't maybe use this completely 
different protocols, but gives you all the same benefits and and um, goals that that a network operator may want without using existing standards, or they can integrate either way. Okay, I think we're good on that particular point then. I, so I, th I think the plan is with this definition, we're coming up on the hour, um, what we're going to do uh, here. We were going to schedule some follow-up calls, uh, ideally have um, have it available for some of the folks that are in Asia Pacific that are, weren't able to join, um, give them a time to review. Uh, this call is recorded, so hopefully that can be um, sent out and folks can review, listen to these and add comments. We'll try to add the original Alt-1 and Alt-1 back, uh, Alt-1 and Alt-1.1, sorry, which had comments and folks can add to this. And, and then get some, I guess, more feedback from hopefully more operators that, uh, that are, that are out. From what I'm hearing, it, it sounds like the part that is agreed is, or maybe moving towards agreement is a cloud native network function. Seems to be, we could say that it is an application, a cloud native application. I think there's agreement on that and it's based on components or pieces. And maybe we can say that's microservices, but there's I think we're saying it's a the application level versus a CNF is a microservice. At least I'm hearing that there's more um, movement towards that. I think that would be Alt um, four if you look at the definitions to simplify it uh, versus Alt three. So it's a network function is like a cloud native application, which is similar to a virtual network function. And that's made of uh, microservices, which are similar to virtualized network function components. And not to say we're going to use Alt 4, but it sounds like at least that keeps coming back up. That a, at least from the NFV world, a virtual network function is composed of many little parts. And that's similar to a cloud native application. And, yeah, I'd agree with that. And then we seem to be uh, in agreement that there needs to be something um, talked about what are some of the principles, uh, some of them are pointing out immutable infrastructure, declarative APIs, microservices, and that repeatable de deployment process. That's one of them that keeps coming up in reference to the cloud native principles, uh, specifically saying if it's a CNCF definitions and we're talking about cloud native, those may be moved into a later chapter, so it may not have to be a different document. Um, and then some type of mapping to the Etsy standards for, for understanding. So get having an understanding of, for folks going one direction or another would be desired, however the wording is gonna be. And then maybe, um, something regarding being able to implement existing standards and how we word that, whatever that, that portion needs to be looked at. That's that interfaces and functional behavior. All right. Well, um, does anyone have anything else? Got about four minutes.
um, when when are we looking to have that follow up call to review the definitions? Do we think? Well, um, I'm guessing before um, KubeCon. Yeah, before KubeCon, I posted some suggestions um, in the chat. I think um, that Alex is the only one that responded, and I can drop them in here. But we're kind of at the end of the call, so um, let me see. Um, follow up. I'm going to drop it right in here in the action items, or I'll, I'll put it right here in the. So I'll put them in the document. Thank you. So I was suggesting 5 a.m. Eastern the, um, for t Tuesday, that's tomorrow. And that would be the coincide with the normal Taco Music Group uh, third Monday call time. If that's, unless that's uh, too soon, um, but thinking that we don't have a lot of time for, if we're going to get feedback with, if, if we're trying to get this done before KubeCon and publish, there's just not a lot of time. But we could spread it out and maybe, you know, just depends on what folks want. The main thing I would like is if people would promote to get eyes on this and um, get some feedback. So one last uh, one last thing as well, uh, unrelated to the uh, to the uh, uh, white paper. So uh, I just want to make a quick announcement. So there's an Edge Computing World event coming going on in Mountain View in uh, early mid December, um, and I'm part of the program committee to help load it up with uh, with people on the networking track. And there's still a couple slots open, and I want to make sure we get some cloud native. Uh, talks in that particular path. So if you're in the Bay Area uh, or are okay with traveling in that time period, then uh, get a hold of me on Slack or LinkedIn, and I'll see about pairing you up with the um, with the organizers. Um, anyway, just want to talk that out as well before we break. Um, thanks, Frederick, uh, for bringing it up. Ram. This is Ramki, so I'll, I'll touch base with you. That is, yeah, it's a good one. Thanks. Perfect, thanks. I think you're welcome too. So, my just wrong All right. So, the thanks, Frederick. Um, maybe post to the Telcom user group mailing list and the Slack channel about that. For yeah, I'll, that's a great idea. I'll, uh, I'll send that off as well. So I'm not hearing anything other suggestions for a follow up. Uh, I will say that the main reason I was doing tomorrow uh, it was 5 a.m. Eastern was I know that there's some conferences going in Shanghai. And I think that it ends on Wednesday, and I could see folks traveling. So trying to hopefully get some of those folks to join, so they'd see this in their evening, but not midnight. So that would be good. I guess I'll post, a, and if I put another post in the Slack channel, but. We can schedule those, maybe get uh, get them on the calendar for 5 a.m. Eastern and 8 a.m. Pacific on Wednesday. So two more calls to get some feedback.
I think that the meeting, um, thanks Lucina for posting this. I think the meeting on November 18th, which is um, during KubeCon, probably be canceled. Unless someone else is going to run that, um, I'm not gonna be on that call. I don't know how many people would be available. Does anyone want to volunteer to run that and keep it going on November 18th or? Or we can just cancel the call. Okay. We'll post about that. Taylor, this is Taylor from CNCF. Do you want me to go ahead and cancel that off the calendar then? Please. Okay, thanks. Can you follow up with me after the call regarding those other two meetings? For November 5th and 6th? Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, thanks, folks.